honestly, throughout the year, I probably do about five or six drills, and I just wrap it every single day. I'll adjust them, of course, based on the scheme that we're running, but I just keep it simple because what they're going to see in the game is what they're going to see in the game. You see what I'm saying? So I just pretty much just keep it simple, and once they know it, they run through a lot faster. Now, with this, the diamond cut drill, this is when I that kind of blew up a little bit, you know, on Twitter. But it's my favorite drill because I can do it for inside zone. I can do it for duo. I can do it for outside zone, if that makes sense. So in this diagram right here, this is more so like an inside zone track, okay, because the running back is all set to the right. He's going to press the corner of this diamond, okay? So in this diagram right here, right, the diamond plays your front side, so you got to try to make a one-stick cut and again vertical for a backside hit, okay? If, his, uh, if the downline plays it backside, you want to win with speed now, like a speed cut almost, and they get vertical. That's how you want to pretty much make it, okay? So diamond cut is good for making the first level read. Then once you get through vertical, you can also have is it a physio ball. You can have another defender for them to make a second cut because that's going to be more realistic, all right? Now, you can do the same thing for the outside zone, right? Now, I just displaced the running back off, um, offset. Now, he's going to get into the line of scrimmage and press the corner of that you know, that, that diamond right there, right? If the down, down lineman plays the front side, get back vertical, okay? If he happens to hit the front side, win with speed. Now, in this diagram right here, the running back, okay, he just, I like he's either under center or he's in pencil, okay? Because depending on where the running back is in line, your aim point may be a little bit different because you're going to be displaced either further or more so behind the line of scrimmage. That makes sense, okay? So, you know what I'm saying? You can just adjust it to any type of run screen that you want. The difference between the diamond drill and the T drill is that with the shape of the diamond, you're going to win with more speed and a more of a sudden cut, if that makes sense, okay? Um, and then with, with, besides that, you can have a stiff arm, you know, run somebody over using the bag, whatever the case you want to do, okay? So here, this is basically just outside zone, mid zone, how you want to call it. Now, you can tell a defender to read a defender in a line of scrimmage, okay? So if it's like Miz on the outside zone, you may tell your running back, read the first defender, big gap or wider, for example, right? Now, I tell my running backs that, but I say make read that defender, big gap or wider, the first one, and also read your block. Look at the tackle of the tight end, depending who's the end man line of scrimmage, okay? Because you're going to see more so butts, if that makes sense, because the lineman is going to be moving more laterally, Laterally, right? So you probably got to make more read of your blocking scheme. So what the running back doing is here is now he's going to read the, the block. If you see the back of the tackle or the tight end here towards him, he knows it's probably going to cut more vertical. And now we're just going to simulate the arm tackle, run through contact right here, trying to secure the ball. All right? He press it. Now he gets the back away from him, right? So he knows they're trying to seal the edge. He's going to get vertical, and I'm still working that ball security position if somebody's tackling him or trying to punch the ball out, if that makes sense. Okay? So you press it, butt up, cut up, lower your shoulder, run through contact. Boom. Simulate the ball security, security position right there, okay? Same thing. Read it, press it, get vertical, so accelerate on the outside, okay? Now, this is the diamond cut drill. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. It's jumping a little bit. All right, so now I'm just trying to simulate more so pistol alignment. I could do the same thing for inside zone or duo, right? More of a vertical downhill attack, making a second cut off of the second level guy like he's doing right here, okay? Simulate the ball security position after that as well. Come back to it. Slide, drop. And then try to get vertical, making a second cut, okay? Now, this is more so inside zone a little bit, all right? So we're still pressing this down the corner of the diamond right here, right? This is a good job by the running back here, trying to win with speed on the front side. Not sure why it's jumping so much, guys. Sorry about that. All right, so it's now. Still, it's yeah. still playing, all right. Okay, cool. So you guys, we're in the dome in this clip, I'm assuming, right? Everybody can see it correctly, right? Yep. So now we're taking away the front side read for the running back, okay? Now we're just focusing on the back side read, Okay. So it's going to be outside zone, right? He presses it, and he has to get back vertical if the defender at the second level is going to be a linebacker flowing to the top or say to coming down here, right? Because he knows he gets a backside read. He presses it, and he gets vertical, okay? If the linebacker stays to the outside, the running back is going to have to keep it vertical, okay? So you'll see it right here in a second. Press it. Hop over. Press it. Jump cut over. Good. 
And now with this one, right, you simulating two vertical cuts, okay? The running back just got to make something miss on the physio ball. The good thing I like about physio ball is because it's like low. It's not it's this. The running back's not going to get hurt. And it forces them to react to something that comes at them, if that makes sense, okay? Because we're simulating the same type of outside zone, the mid-zone read. They just got to make something miss that's coming at them, okay? So for the sake of this drill, even though I got three bags lined up here, right, I treat the middle one as their aiming point, okay? So when I do my indie work, I give them an aiming point because they have an aiming point in any type of rush game that they run, and I give them a read so they can reiterate that verbiage, if that makes sense. It'll get old over the course of time, but I say it every single time because that's what the time is going to happen again. So now we just focus on two vertical cuts with the mid zone or the outside zone. The biggest difference between outside zone and mid zone, in my opinion, okay, is going to be where outside zone is going to be more of a true stretch. With mid zone, the running back, could probably see the more vertical backside cut a little bit quicker. That's the only difference between the two, okay? But either or, they can both hit outside or, outside or more cut up more so vertically, okay? Now, this is still Anderson a duo, right? But I want to go to the tight here for a second. I'm going to slow it up. He gets a slide cut. Now, the small little crease right here, the arm tackle, just accelerate and run. Okay, Coach, everybody saw that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, got you. The reason I want to show this is because I tell my running backs this. Even though you're going vertical, you may see a, a defender who's half block. Your body's going to project you forward. They're coming from an outside position, okay? So your body will project forward through the arm tackle or through their shoulders, if that makes sense, okay? You got to try to hit women's speed. Now, if the guy is a really dude, he may hit you. He may go laterally, right? But if you're fast, you run four speed forward, either he's going to have the arm tackle, you still drive for a couple yards, or he completely whips. So here, run the small crease and set it for a touchdown, okay? I'll play one more time for a speed so you guys can see it, all right? You can see you can see the decisiveness there as he yes. sees as he sees that relationship between the blocker, that exact same thing you're working in that drill, right? He yes. gets that stimulus, that stimulus on the outside. He's able to put his foot in the ground uh, and make that that one cut decisive, you know, move downfield. Yes, and the big thing about that, the running backs. Every now and then, some guys have a better feel for it. Sometimes it takes guys to get better at it, right? So let's say you sit on the field, they don't see it. If you go on the field and they see it and you play it over and over again, they can start to get comfortable with it and they know that hole's going to close at some point. If I just hit it right now, I'm good. If that makes sense, especially at our level, you know, all that stuff hits pretty well. So this is outside zone here. The running back presses it. He see bust towards He knows to get vertical. Just like the drill. First cut, second cut, make that miss. Same thing. When Miz on the outside zone, I tell the running back, it's first cut, second cut. If the first cut tells you to go back inside, you got to make a second cut as quick as possible, okay? So you see it from the tight, small thing, bust towards them, they kicking it out, small crease, accelerate, and just make somebody miss. And that's why I think like the the drill set that you're showing here is, is so valuable because these are all real time decisions. So when yes. you're when you're drilling it, like there's obviously you think okay, uh, what one of the better outside zone runners I ever had was not that fast. Exactly. He was just very decisive. So he might not necessarily hit that 65 yard touchdown around the corner, but he was getting seven eight every single time. And and when the O line or the receivers did a great job downfield. He was turning that into 15, 16, 17 every time because he was always decisive. Exactly. Whereas you get a lot of guys who are so fast, they they start going and then they never know when to change gear or they never know when to put their foot in the ground and get up the field. Or when they do see that, they don't do it with the 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 efficiency that you need to build in the movement. So you end up with that kind of one, two, three up the field, and then that arm tackle has become a shoulder tackle, or you know, mm -hmm. that blocked second level player you know, is unblocked or that safety who's coming down, they're able to, you know, put the stopper in, in the bottle um, and, and take that away from you. So that, that's where I, I love, I think this is so valuable, like for guys who are coaching running backs at any level, right? Obviously, you know, the higher level you're at, the more stimulus or the more different ways you might approach the drill because mm -hmm. your guys are going to, you got to have more time with your guys, right? But at any level, the, my big takeaway from this is your, your drills have to match what you do in the game. Yeah. So if you're going to run outside the zone, you have to work that in a way that translates to the game, right? It's not enough to just say, hey, you're outside aiming, you know, every outside zone install ever aiming points, the outside hip of the tight end or whatever, 
right? And and you're going to run and someone cross your face, you get vertical. Everyone knows that, right? Mm-hmm. But it's how do you actually drill it so your your players can get, you know, whatever it is, that thousand reps they need to, to master something over their career. How can you more efficiently get them to that point, which, which is, I think, what we're seeing here? Yeah, and then, it, like you just mentioned, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the fastest guys. Like this guy right here, he's more my bigger bag, my strong bag. Solid player, you know, we're, we're lucky to have this kid right here. So here's Reed, same thing. He presses it. He sees that we seal it. He's going to sell it to the outside. First cut, second cut happens right there, okay? The one-step cut, get vertical, and you score a touchdown, okay? So we had two examples where the running back got more of a vertical cut, okay? I don't really like to say cut back sometimes. I like to say a vertical cut because if he had to read that time to cut up vertical, it's going to happen more vertical than backside. Same thing. He sees the edge, he presses it, and he goes and he scores. Same type of deal. Now, if this clip right here, now, same thing, right? We did the gun um, outside zone and mid zone, running back displaced, okay? All right, so we're going to get a good little mesh here, good little ball play. He press it, he immediately sees everything get washed across his face. He knows I'm going to cut this vertical right now. There's no way they keep stretching it. You see what I'm saying? Let the kids be ball players. Don't make it complicated. First cut, second cut, get vertical, and then go score. You'll see it better from the tight. You'll see it here. He goes. He sees everything get kicked out. He like, I'm going up right now. First cut, second cut comes right here, and then go score. Yeah, I think especially on outside zone, like mm-hmm. it has to be so – not that other stuff you can afford to be hesitant, but – you're spending some time behind the line of scrimmage. Like yes. your, your, your clock is, is in some ways, you know, it, it, you have to be on, not on time, but you have to adjust to what you see. So yes. in that sense, you're right. Right away, he knows, okay, I've got a defensive lineman's body in my path. There's no way I'm stretching this to the edge. No. Right. Which is, by the way, the instinct of every high school running back in, in, in freshman and sophomore because they're such good athletes, they're like, yeah, that guy's standing there, but you know, he's he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to chase me down if I work to the edge. Whereas you get to this level of football and everybody can run, yes. you know, it's it's so important. And 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 like I've been saying, that's why I was so excited to to watch this clinic. But when you're doing that, when you're doing that diamond drill, how often like are your meshes based on game plan, or do you just kind of rotate through them so that you're hey, if this ends up in the game plan. Uh, or if we want to go to this later, like how often, and I'm not sure how much, you know, you guys change your meshes right. on that type of stuff, but what would be your approach to that? Um, Of course, it varies week by week, you know, so depending is if like we're going to be more so, and I said we're going to be more so gun, I can, you know what I'm saying, do both. Um, I have a good amount of Indy throughout the year for the most part. I might have about 10 to 15 minutes here and there, but over the course of time, those reps add up anyway. You see what I'm saying? Totally. Yeah. So it, they, they once they know it, they know it. You know, and then once I got comfortable with the measures, hand the ball off because of the different relationship, like, I'm not going to be handing the ball off just like the quarterback does. It's a different type of feel. No matter how perfect I do it, it's a different type of feel. But once yeah. I simulate it, right, it's all going to go there. I do full work with them, stuff with them every single day before practice. So everything becomes second nature. Those little steps like that, little things like that, it just builds up over, over time. We get good reps at it on the field. We get good mental reps in film as well. You see what I'm saying? So we can do all three different types of measures. I get them done in six minutes, no matter what, or yeah. less. No, that's awesome. You know, my, my then, other question. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Are you good, coach? My my other question was, I found it harder, and this is probably just because of my own practice, but I found it harder to run that that tr- that outside zone out of the gun. Mm-hmm. I think I I mean at least for the players I've worked with, they've all felt more natural, at least in the pistol. Like maybe we're in the gun, but we're we're more in the we're still in the dot. We're not, you know, on, on either side. Do you got any uh tricks of the trade for yeah. if your guys are struggling to run it out of shotgun, how you might clean that up? Yeah, I had guys who like one or the other. That makes sense. So the good thing about pistol or under center or dot, however you want to call it, right? You're not completely turning your shoulders. It's like you're in a gun, if that makes sense. So with that, right, you can see everything in front of you. You might get a quick peek at the backside, right? But if you're going to go from the gun, just don't tell your running back to completely turn shoulders to the sideline because you're obstructing their vision. And they get to the mesh, right, have their shoulder slightly turn into the line of scrimmage and make their aiming point more so into the line of scrimmage after the mesh, if that makes sense. 
So the shoulders are not completely turned, but they're more so point at a lot of scrimmage in the direction that they're running. You see what I'm yeah. saying? But if yeah. you're running too stretch, true outside zone going, of course you're going to try to have the running back shoulders more so flat and turning and running, if that makes sense. But with us, right, I don't tell them to close off their shoulders into the run direction because it kind of blocks their vision and be able to hit a vertical cut, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You yeah. know, so it's, and then um, and I know you made a good point a few moments ago, things look different post now, but I tell them this every single day, the running backs know this. Every single run scheme never looks exactly the same every single time that you run it. So they know that. So they just got to be able to use their eyes and their vision and trust it. So um, I'm going to show you this clip right here, same thing. We pressing it. He sees the kick out block, but towards him, he gets vertical first cut, run through the arm tackle right there. Second cut, get back in the groove here, and then go score. I play at full speed for you guys. Shoulders, first cut, arm tackle, second cut, and then go. Man, I don't know what it is. I I have this. I love outside zone conceptually, and every we've had some teams we've been able to run it all right. But mm-hmm. it's always kind of been our our second our second punch. And every year I watch somebody's film and they're so good at outside zone. I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm going back to it. It's, yeah, man. it's the way to go. I, I think the, the Rams with Gurley was the first one. Oh, what well, they were like, oh man, this is this is the best playing football. And then I always, you know, these are these are the drills I think can make up that gap, you know, mm-hmm. for, for me personally. And we've we've hit some good stuff off outside zone, but um, you know, I think it's one of those things where, like you said. It's. I feel like it's even more unpredictable than inside zone because you're just on a longer clock. Like more stuff can go wrong because you're behind the line of scrimmage longer. Right. So, but the 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 challenge for the defense as well as I feel, you know, there's a lot more that can go right for you too. You know, one guy gets reached or you know one guy gets washed out. Like we've seen most of these clips. Um, you know, one guy gets washed out and all of a sudden you're making like you said first cut, second cut. Yeah. And and it's it's really clean for your guys. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, this is probably one of the last ones for us as on a thing. So same thing we're in the center here. Slow motion. We press it. He gets buzzed towards because the record runs to the arm tackle. We're showing the drill here. And as long as you show like we hold the pad, like we did the first time I showed it, that made sense. So you'll see it here again, okay? I slow motion it. Buzz towards him. Get very cut. He runs to the arm tackle. I think that's a backside D lineman. And you see a guy at you, just lower your shoulder and just try to finish the best way you can. So the same type of setup we see every single day, okay? And then this is um, also a pitch type of play, but the same type of deal as to get foot in the ground and getting vertical, okay? So we're going outside, right? Just like we're doing outside zone. We press it, you press it, you press it, see the small crease, run through the arm tackle, and you go. Just like that. Same type of deal, but 